introduce yourself first. Nate Boone Crow. Okay, also anyway. known as the Grand Reaper. Um, um, explain. Talk about your upbringing a little bit. The upbringing was sort of like beautiful. My mother took care of us, did what she could, but I always felt different than my brothers and sisters because. I was always out there hustling money any way I can and so forth, even though I was a little boy, little boy man. And uh, I started hustling at the age of seven, but I didn't get into real hustling until I got eight, nine. That's when I learned how to sell drugs and be a strong arm person for, you know, that the older uh, crowd, <laughs> because even though I was small, people was knew that I wasn't nothing to play with. Most of them that were like, man, get your little butt on out here. I said, no, you don't want none of this. Of course, me and my friend, we was always together. Wherever he went, I went. Wherever I went, he went. So when people try to start something with me or him, they wouldn't see both of them at the same time. One of us will be always in the loop, like watching and see what they're going to do. And if they do something stupid, he would come up behind them, hit them, and I would slip up my little hatchet stick and bust them across the face once they bend down. Wham! And we beat the hell out of them. Word got around real quick that, hey, man, those two little guys, man, they beating the hell out of grown folks or people that's old enough to... uh we supposed to mind them. We don't mind you if you're wrong about something or you're trying to uh, you trying to bully us. But then, when I was nine, it was uh, this guy that sold drugs in the neighborhood named Charlie. And uh, I used to watch him sit back and just watch him on my porch to see what he was doing, how, how his layout was. Then I told my friend, hey man, Charlie's selling shit, man. That's why he always got money in them guns. He said, how you know that? I said, I've been watching them. He said, man, we need to talk to him. You want to rob him? I said, no. We're going to see if we work for him and get some money that way. If not, then we're going to probably rob him. <laughs> so basically, we was uh, went to him and told him, hey, man, we would like to make some money, man, with you. He said, what you talking about? Well, you know, we've seen you give guys in their neighborhood packs. And I'm assuming that's heroin because sometimes we'll follow them and see what they're doing with it. And they were shooting it up. So we want to know, can we get down with you? We do anything anything you need us to do. I said, man, y'all too little. How old y'all? Nine or ten. I said, yeah, about that age. It made no difference. The age don't make a difference. What make a difference is the, of the mentality of us. And we may be young, but we don't act like we kids. He said, what can y'all do? I said, what you need to do? Do somebody owe you some money? He said, yeah. I said, well, tell us who they are, and we'll go, and we'll go collect your money. He said, y'all going to collect the money? Yeah, just tell us who it is. That's when they told us about James. I said, okay. So we found James on the playground. We walked over there. Hey, man, you owe Charlie some money. Man, get your little ass from over here. What you talking about? Oh, you owe Charlie some money. So either you're going to give us the money, or well, you better build yourself a rocket ship and get off this planet. Hmm. He was like, man, what you two little niggas think y'all are? Already germed and eased away. He didn't even watch but what Jerry germed and eased away came up behind him. So once Jerry come up behind you, I know the routine. Jerry going to hit him. Then when he bend down, I'm going to break his jaw with this uh, hatchet uh, axe. So... He bent down, broke, I broke part of his jaw, blood running out, so I grabbed him by the head and pulled out my switch blast and now we gonna kill you. Man, don't kill me! You do you got the man money? Hold on, hold on, I got I got some of it. Well give it up. He gave us the money, he gave us the money. And we started walking away to him, I'm gonna fuck y'all up. Whoa. That's one. He's like, one what? You gonna mess us up? 
Yeah, hold on, fuck. That's two. When you get to three, you better be able to get the hell off this planet. Because I'm going to kill you. He shut up. He didn't say nothing that third time. I'm waiting for him, though. You going to say something? Come on, say it. And you will see how quick me and my boy kill you. We ain't got no, uh, we ain't got no, uh, paper saying that we we can't kill you. You a grown man. So we went back to Charlie, took it to Charlie the money. Charlie was like, where y'all get this from? We got it for Jane. No, man, you ain't got it. I said, yeah, he gave it to us. He got on the phone and made a phone call. Then he looked at us and went, why y'all messed that man up? He owed money. Let him know. Anytime you owe, you better pay it. If you don't, then you're going to see us. And this was happening at nine years old. Yeah. Did all the way until I got 10. But, of course, I was doing other things, too, like robbing stores, uh, newspaper uh, office when they go and they collect all the money. The kids bring all that money back. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be sitting in the... We'll be sitting in the lobby waiting for them to collect it. And when they collect it, we know where they take it to because my brother worked it for them. So we went and got some ski masks. And we came back and stuck them up. Of course, my brother, Leroy, what you're talking about. Is that you, Boom? I don't know you, dude. Jerry Chamber, well, I don't know you. Man, you born tell the mama. Man, I don't know you. Now give us the money and we're going to start shooting y'all. So... I fired a shot. That man hurry up and got that money out there. God damn sake. <laughs> After he gave us the money. <coughs> Excuse me. After he gave us the money, uh, me and Jerry divvied it up. Then we then I went back home. Uh, Jerry went to his house. When I got home, Leroy was there telling Mama that I robbed him. Mama said, Boone ain't right. What's wrong? Why, why are you lying on your brother? I come in the house and said, Boom. They were saying that you robbed them? Who, me? I'm just a little baby. Mama said, Leroy, quit lying on your brother. I said, why would you say that, Ma? Why he don't like me? She was like, y'all better leave Boone alone. Boone don't do nothing but help me clean up the house. He just sit around. So after Leroy went outside, I went outside behind him. I said, listen here. I pulled my knife out, put it up to his throat. I said, listen here. Don't make me kill my own blood. Don't make, you, shh, shh. I poked him a little bit. I said, don't make me kill you. I had to drag you, throw you in that garbage can back there. Said, I'm going to tell, there you go. I grabbed him in the head like I started squeezing. He said, don't, don't, boom, okay, okay, I won't say nothing else. I said, uh, okay then. Understand, I'm your brother. You don't tell nobody what you see me do or how I do it or anything. Not even... Family member, you don't tell you, you don't say nothing, just you seen it, but keep it to yourself. Don't let me hear that you went and told somebody else, especially your boss. If I if they come pick me up after I get out, I'm gonna kill you. So leave it alone. He left alone, but my little brother was scared of me. He, he, he was just one year younger than me, but he was scared of me. He was, Man, I don't want to be, be around boom. He even asked my mama, could he sleep in the front room? I was like, that's on him, Mom. I'm just trying to help clean up the room, Ma. So my mama never knew anything about my life. So when I went back to Charlie, Charlie had uh, the packs. He, he gave us a 12 pack, two packs an hour. We sell the other 10, and he gets the money for that. So we get the money for the two pack. But then I started thinking, wait a minute. We're taking this man like 120 bucks, and we're only getting 20 bucks. And we got to split it between the two of us. So I said, hey, uh, you need to get him a pack, too, so he can sell his. I'm going to sell this one. You niggas can't sell that. Like the oh, yes, we're going to sell it. Trust us. So where y'all getting it? The same place you get the client from. We don't have any people in the neighborhood use. So we're going to let them know. Here you go. He said, anyway, this, this is what we're going to do. You give us some little bitty pieces and put it in separate bags and give it to us. We're going to pass them out as testers. When they use it, they're going to come back for more. Is it good? So I ain't giving nobody nothing. I said, okay, ain't no, thing, ain't no problem. About six months later, I'm saying that we need more money. So we went to Tyler. Hey, Tyler, we need more money. I ain't giving you niggas nothing. I said, then, well, I guess we want to start our own shit. Said, How you going to start your own shit? You don't know nobody that's selling. I said, oh, we know the people. 
Come on, don't make me fuck you. I said, that's one. Yeah. What the hell is you counting for? I'm going to fuck you all up. That's two. Turned and already slid behind him. <laughs> so he said it again. So I grabbed him and uh, he told me, boy, you going to take my hand? I'll shoot you. I said, you ain't got your gun. I got it. I picked that up when I came in the house. And you didn't even notice. You told me, what you? I said, shh, shh, shh. Turn behind you. And he got a big old knife. And he going to cut you from the back. Like, man, you can't. Well, anyway, Charlie came up missing. People was looking for him like, where the hell Charlie? Charlie just left. All his stuff is in his house. Everything. Mm -hmm. Of course, about maybe, I think about maybe three weeks or a, a month later, they found somebody stinking back there in the back. Somebody tried to bury that man. I'm like, damn. It's damn shame. <laughs> But uh, that's what my sister Louise, she didn't know, but she found out later, way later, that uh, Charlie hit me out there selling drugs. But to 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 uh, digress back to it, we had to find a way to get more drugs. We took what Charlie had there in his house. We took his money. We took everything that we could basically get rid of quick. Nobody seen us go in. Nobody seen us leave. So basically we were... Uh, we knew the guy come by every so often to like bring more stuff to Tommy. So when he came, I was on my porch watching. So I seen him. So I walked over there. Hey man, did you, uh, check this out, man. We want to know, can we buy something from him? He said, buy what? You know what you sell, Charlie. Man, get around here. Where Charlie at? I said, Charlie left. He said, Charlie left. Yeah, man. Charlie ran off. What? Man, why is y'all talking to me? I said, we talking to you because we got money. I pulled out the bag and opened it up. See that? Oh, the tape. I said, that's one. He was like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, one. Don't threaten me. I don't, I don't take kindly to threats. Who the hell do you think you is? Well, maybe you might have heard of my name on the street. They called me Lil Boom. <laughs> he said, wait a minute, I heard that name. You little boom, you the grown up been beating people around us. I ain't been beating nobody up. That's what people say. You can't believe everything you hear. You he like, I like the, I like you little dude. Hop in the car. We got in the car. He rode up to the restaurant. He said, what you want to eat? I said, uh, custard pie and coffee. He got me custard pie. Then he said, uh, come here. I said, what? He started building us. Hey, man, what's going on? He said, no, 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 I'm just making sure you ain't, you know, wired with the police. I ain't got no wire on me. He said, you you good, have a seat. Now check this out. How much money in that bag? I said, 5000 He said, okay, I can work with that. If you need more, you, you get his number call. He slid me a piece of paper with his number on it. I said, okay, cool. He took the money. He looked around, so did me a bag. I'm like, Okay, I put that up my sleeve. He said, what you doing? I said, putting it up my sleeve. I ain't walking around with the bag in my hand. So he said, okay, uh, I like you. I said, cool, because I really didn't want to do something to you. He said, what you talking about? I said, you see the kid looking in the window? Said, yeah. He got a gun. If you would have did anything towards me, he would have came in here and shot your ass up. Of course, I'm going to shoot you from this side. You ain't got no gun? Say I do. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Nobody never checked the necks. I had made a little uh, black case that I, it looked like a, a necklace around the neck. But really, I had put a little small case on I could slip the gun in there. And I said, yeah, nobody ever checked the necks. They go under the arms and all this around the way. Even the legs. He said, man, you sleep. I said, well, I'm a businessman, and I got to make sure nobody try to take what I got. He said, now, that's what I worry about, you getting robbed. With I said, ain't nobody going to rob me. If they do, they better build a rocket ship and get off this planet. So two weeks later, he came back through. I'm sitting on the porch waiting on him. He said, what's up? I said, man, I've been out for almost a week. You sold all? I said, yeah, I sold all of it. 
He said, why you didn't call me? I said, I didn't know if I was breaking protocol by calling you telling you I need some more. He said, wait, when you need, man, you just called me. But I won't be bringing it to you all the time. I might have somebody else bring I said, man, I don't like dealing with nobody else. I don't want nobody else knowing who I am. You know who I am because I came to you. But I don't want nobody knowing me in case I might have to do some work for you. You might want somebody fucked up. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I do got somebody. Pickles. I said, what? He said, yeah, Pickles worked for me. I said, I didn't know that. He said, yeah, Pickles move a little stuff, but he been getting kind of tight with the money. Keep coming up short. Make that nigga understand that he don't come up short no more. And if it do work little do, I say you, your next one have price. I said, okay, deal, deal, deal. So I can go to Pickles, you know, hey, Pickles, what's up, baby? Man, get your little butt away from here. Why are you around here? Your brother not here. I said, what do you mean my brother? Willie ain't here. I said, I don't care about Willie. I come here to talk to you. What? I want you to steal something. You want to sell it? Someone said, are you shit? We ain't making no money off my back. So what you, what you need to do, just listen to me. You know who you get your shit from. We ain't going to mention no names, but you know, I know that you sell. What the hell? I said, okay, let me put it to you this way. Have you heard of the name Boom? He said, yeah, that nigga that run around here fucking people up. Yeah, you're looking at him. You the one they call him the Boom? I said, yeah, that's how I got that name. Like, I like the name Daniel Boom because I always got an axe. And I'm willing to chop a nigga head off. Man, get on from me. You trying to threat me? I said, ain't no threat. Now, Jeremy already worked around coming up on the side of his porch. And he still don't see Jeremy. So, so I said, yeah, man, uh, this is what we're going to do. You make sure you don't come up short no more. And everything going to be straight. You come up short, you're going to see me again. And you ain't going to like it. So, of course, he went and told the guy. He said, man, why you send no two little badass kids? He said, man, that's on you. They may be bad, but they, they good for their word. And you should know that. Everybody in the neighborhood know who they are. <laughs> and nobody want to mess with them either. He done did his work and just checked around and see, man, nigga scared of that little kid called Boom because he always got a gun or a knife or he got that axe. And he loved tossing that axe into things. But of course, Pickle came back and told Willie, Willie going to come check me. I'm your brother. You don't come and check me, man. Nigga, if you doing something, I'm going to tell mom. I said, why well, y'all always want to snitch? You just like that punk Leroy. Talk about, who, who you talking about, Lee? You, is you talking about our little brother? Yeah. You going to tell mama I did something. I ain't did shit. And I'm telling you, I ain't did shit to Pickles. He said, how you know I'm talking about Pickles? Uh, because you Pickle friend. And I heard that he was having problems paying folks. So you could tell him he better have that money. So I'm like, oh, the beat. I said, you don't want to do that, Willie. Trust me. Oh my, if I beat your ass, what you gonna do? Run tell my oh no, mama won't never know. So he started walking toward me. I pulled up my shirt. I said, Don't make me pull it. If I pull it, I'm gonna use it. Then he heard Jern. Yeah, we gonna use it. Man, you come from? I'm in shadow. <laughs> Only the shadows know. That used to be a program that came on TV back then in the, in the, in the 60s. But we basically chased away my brother Willie. But he didn't like me either that much no more either. I don't give a damn if you like me. Stay out of my business. So, of course, when we got older, they locked me up. But they locked Willie up first. So when I get to the youth home, oh, okay, you lock me up. What we do? Now, back then, it was 3 in. That was for the little kids. So I go on there, you know, kids playing games. You know, then they want to be bullies. So I'm like, man, don't play with me. I ain't no gay. We'll jump on you. That's one. Kid, look at me. What, you counting? Yeah. I want to see, can you make it to three and still be alive? Man, I'll beat you. That's two. Jerm locked up with me, though. <laughs> we both were on the same floor three in. So... 
He got ready to say it again, but Jerm grabbed him from the neck and pulled his neck back and stuck the toothbrush that we had sharpened up to take over. So I walked over to the boy and put mine in his chest. I said, listen here, you want to come up missing in the bathroom? Man, what y'all going to shh, 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 shh. The guard just happened to see all three of us standing. Hey, what y'all doing? Nothing. Just talking. Shut up. Huh? I had to tell the kid to shut up because he was been a holler. I poked him in the chest a little bit. Shut up. Tears start rolling down his face. I'm like, what the hell? The man come over to him. What the hell going on? Of course, I just took mine and eased it back up in my shirt because I, I had two rubber bands around my wrist so I could slide up under, under the rubber band so that the guard won't say, I ain't got nothing. The kid looking like, he's been to stick me. You, you lying? Oh, he lying. He said, and the guy behind he said, what guy? There was somebody behind me that grabbed me up on my head and pulled me back. The only thing I know that I felt something in my neck. Uh, you talking about, who are you talking about? I don't know. So they said, okay. Hour later, they moved me up to 4C. The older kid, I'm like, what the hell? Jerry stayed on 3N, though. I said, oh, man. <laughs> ain't no problem. I stayed up there. Of course, the kids on there, they bigger than me. Want to be bullies, too, again. So I'm sitting down there watching TV. The kid smacked me in the head. Whoa, what the hell's wrong with you, man? Get out my chest. Get up. I won't see your name on this chair. Always oh, sit there. Well, you ain't sitting here today. I'm in it. So he shoves me up out the chair and I fall to the floor. So, of course, I said, okay, tough guy. You're damn right. Mm -hmm. I walked around the unit back and forth, back and forth. I finally seen what I wanted the fire hydrant. <laughs> So I go peek back up to the front in the TV room. I don't see nobody around it but three guys. And the guard was in the little square booth, just sitting there reading this paper or whatever. So I grabbed the fire stick and went over there. Pow! That nigga hit that blow. Now I raised back to hit him again. Next thing I know, I was tackled. The guard that tackled me down. What you trying to do? I said, he, he was bullying me. Why you hit him with that? Well, he's bigger than me. He said, man, you're trying to kill this monster. That's the uh, routine, ain't it? I ain't going to beat him up. He come back and beat me up, and then I go back and beat him. Oh, no, I'm going to get rid of him. He said, man, you crazy. That's the thing I know, I wind up on 5C. My brother on 5E. I'm like, what do you want to put me way up here with these grown motherfuckers down there? 16, 17, and all that shit. So... They got rid of me the same day from 5C. They said, no, we heard about you on 3C, 4C. Now you here. No, you want to be grown? We sending you to 5N. Okay. I go to 5N. The word get around that they going to stab up my brother. But, of course, they don't know you're my brother. So they start making their little weapons and shit. I'm watching them. What's all that for? Yeah, we going to stick that nigga Willie down there in the gym when he go to the gym. Because we go to the gym with 5N. Six in and five and we go to the gym. I said, oh. Y'all gonna really stick him? Yeah. We gonna fuck him up. He down there talking shit. I said, oh. What? He, told me he stole our shit out the gym last time we went to the gym. So you gonna stick him? Yeah. I said, oh. So I go down there. When they go down there to the gym, Willie come down and I see him walking past, but he don't see me. Because I'm little. And anybody else taller than me, even Willie, because he older than me. So I'm standing there, and they came out from the side and the stick Willie. And I'm walking up behind him. Hey, little dude, go back to the uh, unit. I said, I ain't going nowhere, man. Y'all finna stick my brother. He said, wait, Willie, it's your brother? Yeah, that's my brother. Why he light-skinned and you black? <laughs> we got the same mama, different daddies. He said, what's that in your hand? I said, well, when you stick my brother, I'm going to stick you in the back and open you up. He was like, man, what the fuck? The other kids started telling him. That's that one that got kicked out of 3, 3C, 4C, 5C trying from up here, man. That little nigga dangerous. Now, what you mean, dangerous? Man, we gonna fuck him up. So immediately, I ran up to him and pushed my knife in his back. <laughs> he dropped his because of the shot. Boom! Ah! 
I went to try to grab around the stomach so I could open him up. The other kid pulled me off. Here come the guards and them, they grabbed me. Though. What's going on? I don't know. Somebody, he stabbed me. What was? So they took me to the quiet room and that's when they searched me. And they seen the rubber band and they seen the thing pulled it back up in my head. This little nigga got a, knife, a homemade knife up his sleeve. No wonder we could never find nothing on him <laughs> the rubber band. And he got it tied up so when he let go of it, it slips right back up under. No, this ain't gonna work here. You got to, you're you gonna be punished. Huh? How you gonna punish? You gonna spank me? I advise you not to do that. So they locked me in a room. A month later, I get transferred to a, a foster home. I didn't even know I was being transferred. They done made me ward of the court, took me for my mama in them. Louise found out about it. She came out there to visit me at the foster home. Now, back then, they didn't have road, they dirt road. They wasn't paid or none of that. But uh, my sister came out there and she brought me a game, a Monopoly game. And I took that to heart. Because that's how you, well, I said, well, hey, this is how you make money. Go around this board. I could put I could put this in real life. Yeah. So I started using that game as a real life situation. I got people that want to uh, work for me. And that's like landing on my property. Okay, you can work for me in here. You sell this and you bring me such and such back. I got all that type of knowledge from Charlie when he used to tell everybody. I said, I can use this. So after I got out of the foster home, only because I, I walked off from it. Of course, people say that I ran away, but I, no, I walked off. I didn't run. I walked. Walked home. People, uh, the law been there already telling them, uh, if your son come in, you make sure you contact us because he, uh, he, he ran off. My mom said, why you run off, boy? I said, mom, they treated me like a slave. I was getting up at four in the morning, collecting the eggs, slopping down the pig, brushing the horses. Then about nine o'clock, I had to go hunting. They gave me a 22 rifle, and I go hunting for them. The man was showing me how to shoot. Then he said, hey, you already know how to shoot. I said, yeah. He said, hit that dead in that spot. I said, okay, and I did. He said, you a good shot. Go get me a deer. I said, how many ounces on it? <laughs> he said, just shoot one. I shot one, brought it back, gave it to him. He was like, man, you something else. I ain't got to go hunting with you, do I? I just give you the good gun. You go out there and bring me what I tell you. And I said, yeah. He said, tomorrow, I want rabbit. I then got a rabbit. He said, okay, then at nighttime, they were locking me upstairs. So I couldn't get out, couldn't go play, couldn't do that. I never played. I never been around other kids. When I went to school, the kid was calling me Coon. I thought they was giving me a fucking nickname, you know, cool name, Coon. Of course, I didn't know what that meant until my sister came out there and I asked All these white kids love me, sis. He said, what you talking about? They gave me a nickname, Coon. My sister looked at me and said, Ford, cool is a dirty fun. word, dude. I said, huh? What you mean? <laughs> I thought the N word was a bad word. So I'm a like, coon too, boy. I'm like, but they all call me cool. Said, Don't let them do that no more. So of course, the next part of the day, I go to school. Kid, hey, cool. I walked up to him, punched him in his mouth. <laughs> he lost one too. Because, of course, I had a piece of metal wrapped around my knuckles. I learned mm -hmm. how to bend metals around my knuckles and so forth from the youth home. So I bust him in his mouth. They call her our parents. Because this lady ain't my parent. They stole me from my mama. So they come up there and tell me, uh, he hit somebody in the mouth with something. I'm like, what? Of course, I slide it back up my sleeve. <laughs> they never did search me, so they never got it. So what do you, what you hit him with? With my piss? You hear something in your hand? It was just my hand. I'm a, I'm a strong man because I slap down pig, brush down the horses, I chop up animals and so forth, skin them and all that. So I got strong picking up things. And I did. My body started uh, developing. I started getting muscles. They kicked me out for about a week. But then there was ice skating across from where I lived at the pond. It was frozen over. Now, of course, I don't know how to ice skate. That's white folks' thing. So I like. I ain't going up there. So I'm sitting on the fence just watching. 
And the kid skate by me and smack the hell out of me. Pow! What the He drew blood. He slapped a spark. Oh, man. <laughs> I get up off the ground. And, oh, it was that when that hit me. He didn't fuck He up. said, hey, you won't be eating for a while. You hit my friend in the mouth. Look at Ross. We playing hitting games. So I see the brick. I grab the brick. <laughs> That's I got it on the like this, and he's coming around talking about how I'll slap you again. He went around and how I'll slap you. I said, that was two already. One and two. He came around the third time. Pow! Right in his kissing with that brick. <laughs> He fell on the ground. I'm just laughing. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I slapped the shit out of you. <laughs> and that's when I had to, you know, walk off. Because <laughs> they're going to beat my way in in the foster folks. I went home. Of course, um, my mama called the police and so forth because the police was making threats to us. My family told me they won't do it. So she turned me in. They takes me back, put me in the youth home. Youth home didn't want me in there, but the weekend, no. Nah. Don't bring him in. We're talking about, What's well, that? two just lock him in a cell by itself. And they did. They locked me in there for about two weeks. Next thing I know, they sent me to this camp. And that's when I met my Indian friend. Now, I wasn't there, but maybe two weeks before they kicked me out of there because I had all the kids not eating. We went on strike. Well, me and my friend went on strike, and everybody else had to go on strike because we blocked the door in. I talk kids in there with us. <laughs> so when they tell her, why y'all ain't going to dinner? Wait, why is the door locked? Kid went to her, they won't let us out. Who, me? <laughs> they probably got the door in, came in, kids crying. They wouldn't let us out to go eat, blah, 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 blah. So they tried for me and then the kid. We got transferred to, wait, well, I'm sorry. They transferred me. They transferred him somewhere else. But they transferred me to Wayne County Child Development Center. When I got there, shit, it was beautiful. I was like, this is nice. It's like being in the world again. Just everybody had to sleep in one big ass room. But damn, got, you got a store, school, medical. Hey, I thought I was going to get along that good. Three weeks later, kids over in, uh, man, I've got the unit of that 19, unit 19 was grown folks. Well, kids that was above 18. But they would see me, they were like, Why, what, you, what you got in that bag? None your business. They snatched my bag and looked at, ooh, he got candy. Man, give me my bag back. No, nigga, fuck you. We, we're taking this. Next week, you better bring us the bag for now when you have store day. I let them take it. I'm pissed. So I set it up, go in the woods, because we had the wood back to the back. I sharpened some sticks up, made them like arrows, made me a boring arrow. And I'm sitting back in the wood, just sitting there. Yeah, we're going to play Cowboys and Engines. <laughs> and the kid that took my bag went by. Pull that bow back. Damn thing broke. So I had to make another one. Next day I made a scrumble. I'm sitting down in the woods again. I know he go by every day going to the gym. So I waited. Mm. I let it fly. Call him in the green. <laughs> that kid holler like a bird. I couldn't see him in the woods. Laying, laying low in the woods. When I saw just laid there and watched. He looking around trying to figure out where it came from, but he hollering and screaming, oh, my God, my shot, shot me. He go to the medical. Word got out that somebody shot him, and I was like, damn. Mm -mm -mm. Everybody went to, didn't he take your candy back the other day? I said, yeah. Where was you at? Where are you watching TV? The, look at me sad with that. Mm -hmm. So the kid heard that it might have been me. So he decided to uh, try to get me back. But by that time, Jerm came, well, my boy came in. He got he transferred from Whoopmore Lake to Wayne County Child Development Center. 
So we both together again. I was like, damn, man. <laughs> he was like, man, the motherfucker kicked me out of Woodmore Lake. Look what you do, he said. <laughs> I made somebody eat their teeth. <laughs> Remember how you hit the kid with that fire hydrant? Well, I hit this sucker in the mouth. <laughs> he knocked out all his teeth. So we both did the guy said, yeah, I got some problem over there in college 19. He said, well, who is it? I said, the nigga walking around that big old thing on his butt. Said, Why he got those? Somebody shot him in his butt. He looked at me like, <laughs> you still up to see it, ain't you? I said, hey, fair is fair. He took my cany, I took his dignity. <laughs> so we go into the school. The kid jumped out at us. Hell, we gonna kick you out. School teacher standing right there, Mr. Dickinson. We didn't like Dickinson anyway, so we, 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 he went out there. Mm. So the kid decided not to do nothing to us. Mm. We gonna catch you later. Uh, whatever. We go to class. While we're in class, we go to lunch. Now at lunch, they got forks. And this one I learned how to bend the forks over my hand and pull up the prongs. So yeah, this will work. We won't go in too far, buddy. They're going to be screaming. Hey, don't, what the hell is that? Sir? Homemade weapon. Oh, man. Sharpen up. The end you hold, sharpen on the ground. I ain't trying to kill him at this moment. But I'm going to make him terrified of pulling up on me again. He finna tenderize this nigga. With a so fork. the nigga come out and he see me. I already got the damn thing on my fist, but he don't see it yet. What are you talking about? He grabbed me back my side of my collar and said, come here. And as soon as he grabbed me, I just start shoving it in his face. <laughs> well, face and neck. Oh, what the hell? What the, what the hell? He let me go. He looked down at my head. What the hell? I said, what? You trying to kill him? Yeah. Ain't we fighting to the death? Man, you crazy. His friend looked. And they tried to approach me. John came up with his shit already sharp a year longer. He was like, go ahead, go ahead. So who is you? I'm his, I'm his shadow. You know what? Only the shadows know. <laughs> I said, Jeremy, you still, you still use it? I said, yeah, only the shadows know. <laughs> so I done took the other fork out and put it in my other hand. I got both of them. Homeboy standing there holding his face. He talking about, man, y'all crazy. Y'all gonna get locked up. I'm gonna go tell. So, of course, you know, I ran up on him, get ready to stick him again. He ran off. Man, you grown. You bigger than me. Come on back. I'm going to tell. Then go tell Mr. Camel. I don't care. So he told Mr. Camel. Mr. Camel put me in the quiet room. I go in the quiet room, and uh, when I got out the quiet room three days later, new kid was round into the unit. Now, with the new kid, he going around asking people who the tough is in because I'm going to beat y'all ass. Kids tell him, well, he's in a hole already. He, he's up there in the quiet room. Now, I've seen this kid walk past the quiet room and peep in there at me. Because I'll be just laying there on the mat. I'll never say no when they put me in a hole. Three days later, they let me out. I'll go downstairs to eat my breakfast. I'm sitting there. I pull my oat milk up, put the sugar on it, cut up the, I cut up the banana half of it, put it on there. I'm going to eat it. As soon as I get to put the spoon in there, he stuck his finger in my oat milk. You tell me, is that warm? He said, what the hell you look at? Man, where you get put your finger in my oatmeal? Yeah, I'm just trying to see, is it, is it warm? So I pushed it, I, oh, that's all right. I still got my banana. So I get ready to bite into my banana. And he spit on me and my banana. i like, man, what is your problem? So I'm going to beat your ass. I said, that's one. When I said one, Jeremy got up on the table, walked around. <laughs> but then I stopped him. I said, no, no, this is by myself, please. I don't need two people in the hole. Now, he don't know I'm talking to Jeremy when I'm talking. He said, boy, you crazy. That hole done turned you crazy. I'll mess you up. I said, it's two. And I looked at him. He shoved me against the face. Boy, you know, you know people smush your face. He didn't smush my face, smush me out of my chair. I get up, I go stand by the wall. I'm just standing there. 
Every now and then I look over at him and say, yeah, he ain't going to do nothing. I'll fuck him up if he, if he come back over here. I'm hearing the boy talking tough. Uh, I'm looking. I see the closet door, but I see the baseball bat. Hmm. I look back over at him. I ain't got no fire hydrant, but that baseball bat looked pretty good. <laughs> so I'm easing towards the closet a little bit more. Everybody seems to be wanting to stare at me while I'm standing there. Then when they all turned back to talk because he calling me a coward and all this and that, I reached in there and got the bat. And I started walking over there. The other kids seen it. They all get up to move away. The kids are, hey, man, where y'all going? And by the time the kid pointed on me, behind you, he turned around and looked, and I just laid into the side of his head. <laughs> As I laid into the side of his head, he was like, oh, kicking on the floor, shaking, vibrating and shit. I was like, uh, well, I guess I'm going to get... Uh, Beat up from the guards. The guards come through, and I'm sitting there like, well, God told me. We're going to stop it right here for one second, and then when we pick back up, we're going to pick back up.